everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to see you. I'm so excited that you stopped by today. I'm looking forward to working on some really cute DIY decor projects. These are gonna be so much fun. Things are gonna be a little different. We're gonna try some fun new techniques today and see what we can come up with. So y'all, let's just go jump right into our projects for today. All right, y'all, are you ready to jump into project number one? I am so excited about this project. We are going to be making some acorns today using Easter eggs. For this project, we are going to need these big jumbo Easter eggs, and I found these ones at Hobby Lobby back in their wood pile section. But these smaller wooden ones I got on Amazon and I will link them in the description box for y'all. We're also going to need some jute today and some paint and I am using raw umber and coffee bean. I am going to mix the two of these together because I just wanted a richer chestnut color and the two colors on their own just didn't quite give me that acorn color that I was looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and mix these two together and then we can start Start painting our acorns we're we're gonna call these acorns because that's what we're making out of these eggs <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and paint all of the acorns and on the two the three bigger ones I did use two coats of paint but on the wooden ones I no, I take that back on the three larger ones I used three coats of paint and on the wooden ones it only took a two coats of paint After letting our first layers of paint completely dry, I'm going to come in with a dry brush. I'm using some black chalk paint and a stippling brush here, and I do dab off most of the paint because I just wanna add a little extra depth and dimension to these. So I'm going to very lightly, with a gentle, light hand, just brush on some of these black chalk paint strokes and I kind of just do this haphazardly although I do try to keep all of my strokes going the same direction and it just kind of adds a little extra depth and dimension to these all right so now we're going to get on to the fun part and this is where I really had fun with these so for the acorn tops we are going to need some jute and some clear tacky glue and also some hot glue and for the smaller acorn I just used a thin jute but for the large acorns I am using a bit thicker of a jute so to get this started I kind of wound the tail end of my jute into a really tight little circle and I'm going to dab on some hot glue and then attach that little tiny just our starter starter round here I guess you could call it I'm going to attach that to the top and then we will just go around and around and around this until we get you know the the size of a cap, acorn cap that we want on this. And so for this part, I am using the tacky glue because it dries clear and I didn't really want any of that hot glue to show through because you know hot glue doesn't always dry clear and it sometimes leaves those weird like bead things and I really didn't want that on these. So I am using the clear tacky glue and I just spread a thin layer of the tacky glue and then I kind of do a couple of wraps and then I will add some more glue and do a couple of wraps and I just repeat this entire process until I get that acorn cap to approximately the size that I would like it. So 
at this point, I've come to the end of my jute piece, but I felt like we needed to add just a couple more rows of this jute to the, the cap part of our acorn here because I didn't feel like it was quite long enough yet. So I just used a tiny dab of hot glue to restart my next row so that that jute end would you know be quickly held into place to give me some instant hold. And then I just continued wrapping a couple of more wraps. And so I didn't come all the way down to the very center of the acorn, but just about two thirds of the way. And y'all look how cute this is. I am loving this project so far. So now we're going to go ahead and add a stem and I am using some wired jute here. It's a, it's like a really deep brown, almost chestnut colored wired jute. And I just dab a little bit of hot glue onto that and then stick the stem into place and then I did come in with a much shorter piece of jute and just kind of wrapped around the bottom of that stem to kind of just cover up our hot glue and then I added a little bit of tacky glue and just really pressed this into place almost kind of mushed it in there so that it kind of just became one with the rest of that um, top part of our acorn and this is how it looks so cute I just love it so I'm going to go ahead and repeat that exact same process to our larger acorn so here I am just wrapping our jute the starting point of our jute into a tight little coil this will just give us a really good starting point to start wrapping our jute around the top of our acorn to give us that acorn cap and something to be mindful of here is to try and get your little starter piece as center on the top of your acorn as you possibly can if you get it a little off center as you begin to wrap you might get one side that's just a little shorter or longer than the other so try to just get it as close to center as you can on the top of the acorn so now i will just go ahead and continue wrapping this down about two-thirds of the way down the acorn As I get to the very end of my final wrap here, I am going to use just a teeny tiny dab of hot glue to securely hold that end into place just to give it instant hold otherwise because sometimes that tacky glue takes a couple minutes to set up so the hot glue just gives us an instant hold so we can quickly move on to the next step so i'm going to go ahead and add the stem to this one as well and then to wrap the bottom part of the stem on this one i did use the smaller jute piece because i didn't want it to get too bulky up there on the top so i used that thinner jute to kind of just make one little tiny wrap around the bottom of that acorn to just cover up the hot glue that we use to hold the stem into place then I'll go ahead and dab on a little extra of that uh, tacky glue and just kind of press that down and mush it down in there so it kind of just gets settled really well and it doesn't leave a weird bulk at the top y'all aren't these darling I just love how these have turned out Oh my gosh, y'all, what do we think of these darling, darling little acorns? I love them. I love how these turned out. I think they're probably my favorite. Well, actually, I think I have two favorites from today, or or maybe I have three. <laughs> I love these tur how these turned out, y'all. They were so much fun to make and so easy. And um, I think you should recreate these and let me know how they turn out, because I think you'll have fun with these. I am really excited about our next project today. We are going to be making some woodland mushrooms today. And I did recruit Michael's help for this. We're actually gonna go play in the shop and Michael's going to turn these on the lathe for me. However, if y'all don't have a lathe, don't worry because I have a link 
that will be in the description box for y'all that will take you right to some already pre-made mushrooms so that you can create this project as well. All right, y'all, so without further ado, let's go jump right into project number two. For this project, I did recruit Michael's help, and y'all, I have to give him just so many shout outs right now because I am notorious for coming up with an idea on a whim and then asking Michael, hey, can you help me do this? And he is such a good sport about it, y'all. And so for this particular project, he had just come home from work and I was so excited and I'm like, oh, Michael, can we make this? Can we make this? And so the poor guy just jumped in from getting off of work right into creating these little mushrooms for me. And he, so he's a good sport. I just want to give him so many shout outs because he definitely deserves husband of the year award here. <laughs> all right. So we just set about continuing to turn all of these on the wood lathe and Michael did an incredible job. I love them. I think they are so cute and I love how you can, I love the whole process of watching just a big four by four post turn into a cute mushroom like this. The whole process is neat. It's really fun to just watch them all take shape. Now we can go ahead and move on to staining our cute little mushrooms. And I'm just using some wa um, Waverly Antique Wax and some Waverly Clear Wax for these. And as I started brushing on this clear or this antiquing wax, I wasn't sure I, I was liking it. So of course I brushed some off and then I wiped it off a little bit because I do want to bring out that wood grain and make it more of a stained effect here. But yeah, I just wasn't liking this color. I felt like it needed to be just a little darker, a little richer to kind of just give it more of that deep woodland look to it. So I added a little bit of black to my antiquing wax and I might have, when I said a little, I actually might have added too much. <laughs> I added quite a bit, but it all works out in the end because I brushed it on and then immediately come in and wipe it off before it starts to, you know, dry and set up because, you know, chalk paint will dry really quickly. So I am used to using a wet wipe here to wipe this off and bring out that wood grain. And I really love how the wood grain is popping in these. It just gives these cute little mushrooms a lot of texture and character. I'm really liking how this looks. I really love the wood grain especially. I just think the wood grain is really pretty in these mushrooms. So I'm going to go ahead and just repeat that same exact process to our remaining two mushrooms. And then I will let that coat dry thoroughly. And I only did one coat of paint on these. And I'm going to go ahead and let it dry thoroughly before we move on to sealing them. I am really loving how these are looking, y'all. I just think that wood grain is so pretty in them. So I'm going to go ahead and stain our very last mushroom and then let them sit and dry thoroughly before we move on to sealing them. So they have now completely dried and I'm going to go ahead and just give them a very liberal coat of this antiquing wax. And this is what's going to seal our... This <laughs> Yep, I can talk. This is what's going to seal our mushrooms. And I do use a really liberal coat over all three of them. And then I will leave that wax on for a couple of hours and let it kind of just soak into the wood before I move on to buffing them. Now that we've given the wax plenty of time to soak into the wood, we can go ahead and buff them out. And I'm just using a soft cloth to do this. And when all is said and done, I really love how this clear wax just gives these a really pretty, soft, silky finish. And our mushrooms, oh my gosh. I am loving them so much. This one right here is probably my, my favorite. <laughs> He's a cutie. I like them all. I love them all though. Michael did such a good job turning these on the lathe for me. And if y'all like mushrooms and you want to recreate these, I will have a link in the description box for y'all where you can purchase some pre-made ones for yourselves. And I don't know, I am really loving 
the whole mushroom woodland theme this year. So y'all will have to let me know what you think of these. I know there are so many fun ways that you could style these and fix them up really cute. I chose to just keep it simple and kind of just leave them as is, but you could really have fun getting creative with these ones. Our very last project for today is going to also be just something fun and whimsical. We are going to create a really cute pumpkin stack. So let's just go jump right into project number three. Our very last project is going to be a fun pumpkin stack. And I am just using three different size pumpkins here. I found these at various places. I've had them for a while, so I'm not really even sure where each of them came from. So we'll need our pumpkins. We're going to need some flour, which you'll see why in a little while, some paint colors of your choice. And then I'm also using some of these fun fall picks. This is some pops that I found at Hobby Lobby. And then of course these beautiful leaves and I love the color tone of all of these leaves. And then I'll probably use a few of these little acorns and some of the pine cones off of that stem. All right, y'all, so now we are ready to get started. So I'm going to start by removing the stem from our pumpkin. And y'all, this guy gave me a little trouble. He did not want to come off of that pumpkin at all. And it tore the pumpkin, which was kind of weird. So the outside of this pumpkin was kind of a, it almost felt like leather, but I know it's not leather, obviously, but it was kind of a weird leathery feel. So anyway, it did tear it, but I think all is good here. We'll be able to just fix that. The paint will kind of hold it back down in place. And I did dab just a tiny bit of glue in there to kind of hold it down. So the first color that I'm going to use is um, this folk art, and it's called cinnamon swirl i believe that's what it was or caramel swirl but i will have all of the colors colors listed in the description box for y'all and i am doing these pumpkins i kind of wanted to go for like a monochromatic look here so i'm using three different colors but they're all very similar to one another so i did go ahead and paint this entire pumpkin and then i'm going to set it aside to dry while working on this one so I'm also removing the stem from this one and painting this one with a slightly different color of that, that same like color palette that we're going for, just a slightly bit darker than our first color. So I paint the entire pumpkin and it did take three coats of paint for me to cover all of the pumpkins in this project. getting our initial three coats of paint onto these pumpkins and letting those first layers thoroughly dry, we're going to come in with just a little tiny bit of paint in the same color. And I'm just putting a little bit on my brush. I'm not doing a lot because I basically just sort of want to wet this pumpkin up a little bit. Then we're going to come in and sprinkle on a whole bunch of flour. And I was pretty liberal with this. And then you want to let the flour just kind of sit there for a couple of seconds before brushing it away. And to brush it away, you definitely want to use a very soft brush for this. If you use a brush that's got really stiff, hard bristles, it'll just wipe all the flour away and kind of defeat the whole purpose. Look at how this looks, y'all. I'm really liking this technique. I think it's kind of cool how it just gives it a little bit of depth to it and it kind of made the pumpkin look real almost it doesn't really look like a fake plasticky pumpkin to me so here i'm doing the other side of it so i do just do one side of it at a time so what i did discover though while doing this is after the paint you know that that paint layer that we put on to kind of wet it once it dries the flower does kind of disappear a little so i did this three times. I did three coats of this, so I put on a little bit of paint, 
sprinkled on the flour, brushed it off, let it dry, and then I repeated that same process. But look at how it just gives this pumpkin so much depth. And it's like the, the one that we haven't done yet is so flat compared to the one that we have floured. <laughs> okay, so after I got them all done, I did take them outside and give them a spray of clear, just matte clear coat to sort of seal all of that in. And I really like how these look, y'all. I think this came out very neat. It was a very fun technique to try. I'd never done it before, so I'm, I'm pleased with the results. All right, now we're going to go ahead and stack all of our pumpkins together, and I'm just going to use hot glue to do this step. Now that our pumpkins are all stacked and that glue has had plenty of time to set up, we are going to move on to embellishing these. And y'all, this is my favorite part. I love embellishing my projects and <laughs> sometimes I go a little crazy because it's just sometimes I don't, I just can't seem to help myself and I do a little much sometimes. However, you know, it is personal preference. So when embellishing, you just add as much or as little as you please, you know, to just suit your taste and style. So I'm going to go ahead and just add some leaves, some of these big jumbo maple leaves all the way around the circumference of my pumpkin stack. And I just layer them on the bottom pumpkin and the middle pumpkin. Once I feel satisfied with all of the leaves and I feel like it's full and looking good, I can go ahead and start adding in some of these really cute little faux hops that I found. These came at, came from Hobby Lobby in just a stem, like just their little pick stems that they have. So I'm just going to add a few of these all the way around. I don't go crazy with these. I just kind of add just enough to give it a little extra something something and maybe add a little contrast to it. Now that I've done that, we can go ahead and start with the top. And I did add a stem back to the top of this pumpkin stack and I hot glued it into place. So for the very top, I'm just going to layer in three leaves here and then I'm going to move on to adding in some acorns, some pine cones, some more of these little hops. And I do add in some cute little curly cues. And what else do I add? I think, and then I might add a few little extra sprigs and stems to this. So again, you just kind of do you here and just fill it in with as many or as little embellishments as you like. To finish our pumpkin stack off, I'm going to add just one last little sprig to the very bottom. I kind of like how it just added a little bit of character to our pumpkin stack. And of course, we can't forget our cute little pumpkin stack. I'm really liking it. I like the color palette a lot. I think that's my favorite thing about the entire pumpkin stack. So y'all, that is going to wrap up all of our projects for today. I hope y'all enjoyed this and that I've somehow given you some inspiration and some good ideas for some of your fall decor. Let me know down in the comments below which of these projects was your favorite from today. If you 
just stopped in for the very first time today. I'm so glad that you did and it was nice having you here. I hope that you enjoyed this and if you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button and joining my little tiny YouTube family. Alrighty y'all, that is it for today. Thank you again so much for stopping by today. I really do enjoy your company and I appreciate so much that you take time out of your day to come and hang with me. I look forward to seeing you all again next week for some more fun projects. We're actually going to jump into some trash to treasure type projects. I'm going to challenge myself to go shop on a budget and look for pieces that we can incorporate, that we can kind of upcycle and incorporate into our fall decor. So y'all come back and see me again next week. Until then, y'all take care and I will see you soon. Bye. And that's a wrap. <laughs>